let's say May rolls around, you're successful in May, you make it to November and you're successful in November, what would you hope to accomplish as city councilman? Well, it's an interesting thought, you know, you, you win the election and okay, uh, I had sought this job and I've got it, now what do I do with it? It's like the dog that chases the car and he finally catches one. What do you do? Well, once you get sworn in, it's the realization that the buck stops with you now. You can complain, but you have the, you have the authority and uh, the job to correct whatever the problem might be. You're it. It's a sobering thought. And I think that my background, having worked in so many committee situations on legislative uh, activities and state and national and, and local level, uh, working with politicians from both sides of the, of the aisle, uh, I'm one that really believes in the negotiated process of, of advice and consent. Let's sit down and talk about this thing. Let's take your idea and my idea and let's work them back and forth until we actually blend into a solid idea that we both can agree on and that's the one that we push. Uh, and it would be an exciting moment to say, well, let's go do this. I understand the process. I understand how easy it can be if everybody at the table understands the process and the simplicity of a yellow idea and a blue idea working together to become a green idea. And then it all gets done. Uh, I'll work to try to, to make sure that the, any animosity doesn't show up at the council table. There shouldn't be a lot of grandstanding. I, I've seen a lot of councils that do grandstanding at one time or another, especially around election time. They'll explain why they're going to vote no. I don't need an explanation. Just tell me you're going to vote no. Let's get on with it. Or something very brief. You know, I really can't go along with this because my constituents have indicated they don't want me to vote for this, and so I'm going to listen to my constituents and I'm not going to vote for it. That's the explanation I need. I don't spend up there in a five or ten minute dissertation on what you, you believe as a councilman. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm not going to be surprised with the realization that Hey, I'm not just a candidate. I am the city councilman. I plan on making it as much of a full-time job as I can. Uh, it'll be a full-time job with the realization that if I need to take a day off to take my granddaughter to Indianapolis to a doctor or, uh, you know, something of that nature, I can do that. But then when the citizen of Fort Wayne wants to talk to a councilman because of a problem or something rewarding or whatever. They can call my office and I'll be there. Or I can come out to their association meeting and explain to them what the city's doing, uh, how their their vote is important, or what do you want me to do with this idea? You know, I plan on uh, being visible in Waynedale. I plan on being visible in the DuPont area. I plan on being visible in the, in the uh, lakeside area and the, uh, the West, West Wayne area and in Southeast Fort Wayne. I plan on being visible in their part of town. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm anxious to get started. This election is just a process I got to go through first because I, I really think that I'm the one that, that it's my time to be there because I've got the ideas, I've got the background, I've got the knowledge and the willingness to work for the people. Okay. Anything that we didn't talk about that you would like to talk about or mention? No, we've done done pretty much. Uh, I just want the folks that see this to realize that I love Fort Wayne. I've had a great respect for it. Uh, I, I like the feeling that I have when you move around Fort Wayne it's a town that anything you want, anything you need, is available here, uh, both good and bad, but it's all available here. You don't have to go to Chicago to get top-of-the-line clothing or services. You don't have to go to Indianapolis to get that. You can get it in Fort Wayne. 
and once you find out where it is, but it's all here. And once we start talking to the people from the different corners of the city, you're not in the sixth all by yourself. You're not in the fifth all by yourself. You're not in the first or the second all by yourself. That the councilmen in those districts have three partners to work with on anything that develops in their district. And I've talked with citizens that, that well, I, I don't know who my councilman is, or I'm out in, in uh, Wayndale and my councilman is out in the Boyd and he spends all his time in the Boyd, so I never see a councilman. So what about the other three? There's three at-large candidates, three at-large city council seats. They're supposed to be responsible for backup and part of the partnership with every one of the six districts to get the job done. And let's pick up the ball and go run with it. That's a, that's probably about it. I want to. I'm anxious to get started. Uh, uh, I've always had the, you know you have this feeling that oh, we've got a new job coming up and you have that little bit of time that you have the trial by fire. And I've always believed that the best way for me anyway uh, to learn a job is to get in there and do it. You know, and I've done that my whole life. Uh, I, my, my background has so many things that I've done that were out of the realm that I was supposed to be in. Mm. The Navy, for example, as a yeoman, an office worker, uh, 125 words a minute typist, but I was also qualified to stand a boiler watch in a boiler room on a destroyer. I could send and receive semaphore and flashing light on the signal bridge, only because I was just curious about it. I want to know how it was done. I, I wanted to be a part of this whole job. Uh, work in a particular area, then what's the satellite people do it? When I was in the transportation department at Kroger, my job was road safety for the drivers. But I also knew what the warehouse guys were doing, what the car dock guys were doing, what was happening in the shop, the, the mechanic shop, frozen food, became friends with the guy that was a banana expert because he showed me how they ripen bananas and plus the, the administrative part. So everything that I do is a learning process that I is going to make me better and then I can turn around and make a better job out of it. And as I did that in the fire service, I've got a stack of education about that thing. Got a degree in public safety uh, as well as uh, IU. Went to school when I was stationed on Guam at the Territorial University of Guam. I wanted to have more knowledge about what I was doing so that my job was looked at as being a better job. And I'm anxious to start this one. Ready to go. Well, Gordon, we appreciate your time today and we wish you well in May. Thank you. Thank you. Need all the, the party faithful to get me into the big show in November. Yep. And, and well, the primary is, right. primary is not a throwaway election. It's an important election. It, it is, and if the, if the general public uh, looks at the number of candidates that are running for the various jobs and, and a, a diverse population of candidates, mm -hmm. and I just picked up a newspaper down in a coffee shop that has some pretty in-depth interviews with the mayoral candidates, and even if they're not successful, I'm going to keep that paper because their ideas I agree with, and I don't want to just lose them. And someday I'm going to pull this paper back up and say, you know, this person had a pretty good idea that dealt with um, the money aspects from the light lease program, something I hadn't thought about, but it's a doable situation. Another candidate may have a good idea on economic development that I think we ought to salvage and, and learn. okay, let's put it into see if we can get it to work. So it's just not what I do, but it's the combination, the compilation of all these different ideas. I want to be able to bring them back up later on once I get to the seat and say, you know, back in the campaign, uh, Paula Brown had, or Paula Hughes had an idea on this thing. I think we ought to work on that. Or Liz Brown had an idea, or Eric Doten had an idea, or Mayor Henry had an idea, or and you go through all 11 mayoral candidates, there's a ton of ideas there, a ton of reasons why they're running, a ton of concerns from citizens, and they're all valid. They're all valid. Let's put that bushel basket on the table and draw a slip out and work on it. 
you know, get my to-do list, <laughs> if you will. Well, we thank you for your time today. I appreciate it.